Hi guys, it's Aish from Classic Quilts and after a very long time I'm going to be doing another unboxing machine video. Today I have with me the Burnett 70 Deco. I don't know how many of you have heard of this particular model but it is a Burnett embroidery only machine which means you're not going to be able to do any kind of manual sewing on it but you use it only to do computerized embroidery. Now computerized embroidery is definitely super trending. I think anybody who's crafty and loves doing it yourself definitely likes to add a personal touch to a lot of their products they end up having one of these in their homes and uh, today my job is to show you what all comes with this machine why it is absolutely spectacular and why you should have this if you're looking to get into computerized embroidery a couple of things i already like about this machine which comes from the inspiration that i've seen in the uh, burnett 79 that i've shown in our youtube channel before is um, that it comes with a lot of products that are so good for like beginners to start off with an embroidery and you will see that as I unbox it you get a very good selection of hoop sizes you have a very easy to use user display on the machine super easy to access files and to play with different designs and so much fun to use and I kind of feel like when you get into embroidery it should be fun so in this unboxing video I'm going to show you what comes with the machine I'm going to talk to you about how you can hoop and embroider on a piece of fabric so you can see how easy it is to use a Burnett 70 deco so um, if you're wondering whether this is a machine for you, I would suggest that this is basically for people who are interested into getting into computerized embroidery, but your sewing machine does not have the capability to get into computerized embroidery, so you need to buy something different. Or you just want to personalize things and you don't care for sewing, but this is like something that doesn't occupy so much space, super easy to use and lots of fun. So let us unbox this and see how it goes. I'm going to be unboxing this machine like in front of you guys. I'm kind of upset that like the DHL tags are spoiling the front of the machine. I think otherwise it's quite like um, decorative. So hop onto the front and I'm going to show you what happens when you first open this machine. So as you can see everything is very very nicely packed. And you get a lot of things along with this machine already. So this is your warranty card. Um, I believe Burnett offers up to two years of international warranty. Uh, there are terms and conditions, so definitely check with your dealer before you buy this and as to how this works. Uh, I'm happy to explain how Classic Quilts does it, but you'll have to definitely drop me an inquiry and let you know. Uh, fun things over here, guys. You're going to have a manual on how to use it, a quick reference book. It shows you simple things about the machine like how do you plug it in, how do you thread the machine, how do you attach the embroidery unit, how do you start looking and navigating through the menu. So if you're not digital and you like more physical copies, you got one of those. Now this is something that I genuinely think that people who get into embroidery don't understand the importance of. Like, I mean, if you spend even two minutes on an embroidery machine, you know one of the biggest problems is organizing those alphabets, those fonts, those designs, putting it in the right size and just pushing it into the machine and letting it like print it out. And I love that the deco comes with its own software. So if you're just looking for basic lettering, basic editing, it's so much easier to do it on your computer, put it in a USB and then put it in your machine. And I, trust me, like with all the other brands that we sell on our company website, Burnett is the only one that gives you the Bernina toolbox. Um, we've told Bernina that Bernina should start doing it for their machines as well, but right now that's not available. And I know that you get this on the Burnett 70 Deco, and I think this is such a save because you would spend about $300 if you want to buy this for yourself separately. So that's an amazing gift. And please, guys, like, this is such an important thing. Like, it's just so good. All right, so we've got uh, the other things here. We've got three hoops. Now, um, this is another really good thing about this machine is that there are three hoops. You get a small one, and you have a medium-sized one, and then you have a large one. Now, what happens is a lot of people, when they run up the price points, and I understand, like, sometimes you, you're shopping with a budget. You don't want to spend too much of money. But what's the point of getting an embroidery machine that has only one hoop that's like a smaller size? Whatever happened to the bigger size embroideries? Some of them come with like a hoop that's like half the size and that's it or they just come with a very small size. And I feel like for most of us when we start embroidering and we're getting creative and we want to do different surfaces, having a choice of size is super cool. So always watch out no matter whatever machine you're buying, do you get software with it? 
what are the hoop sizes you get with it. And if you find something better, then go for it. But I usually feel that when you start finding something better, the brunette Tiffany Deco becomes more affordable. I mean, that's my, that's my bet. You guys can let me know in the comments if um, you think otherwise. That's the power cord to plug the machine in. That's the foot pedal. It is so snug. <laughs> and these are all the extra accessories. Uh, I'll show this to you very quickly on the surface. So, of course, you get some needles. These are your spool holders. Different kinds of spool holders. That's your thread net for larger spools. You got machine oil. This is not just a cleaner, but it's even a seam ripper. And I think the amount of mistakes that you might make if you're a beginner, that's really nice. This is to change the foot on the machine. You get a couple of bobbins as well. And um, the rest of it is just basic stuff. You got thread spool holders. And here we go. This is your embroidery foot. So yeah, very quick view of everything that you get in terms of accessories. Cool. Let's put that back in. That is a foot pedal. I just don't know how to pull it out. So I'm going to try to do that once I take it out. But let's get to the fun one. Let's try to like see the machine. So there we go. Oh, that's not the foot pedal. <laughs> go figure. I'm so bad at guessing these things. But that's the machine. That was the, 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 the big part of the module. So you can see right now from the top that everything is very snugly packed. Some other fun things, you have a dust cover that you can use to cover your um, machine with. It's come with a nice brunette um, branding. And uh, I think nothing else left for me to do now but to actually pull out. Guys, I just realized something. You're not gonna get a foot pedal for an embroidery only machine. You just need the start stop button. So. Um, there we go. Um, I, I kind of messed up a little bit there. So yeah, we're not going to get a foot pedal on this one. It's just going to be module. I can't believe I thought about that. And I forgot about that for a second. Anyway, so let's do the deed and let's pull this machine out and place it on the table. So is it heavy? Okay, I find it really light, but I do consider myself a little bit strong. I did go to the gym, but there we go. That's the machine. And that is a module. They go together and I'm going to now take out the plastic so you can see what it looks like and then I'm going to put them together and you can see what the machine looks like with its module. Careful, hold it, slide it out. That's the module. It is not a free arm module so it's a flat base which basically means that uh, for some products like tote bags or t-shirts you're gonna have to like remove some stitches but that's not a very big deal most of us who play with these products we already stitch so it's absolutely fine and that's the machine you can see it's very nicely packed it's super safe I'm gonna oh look at that this is so cute guys this little embroidered sample to show you that your machine has gone through a factory test on a small hoop i love it it's like a little gift let me know if you all get the same thing or you get something different i don't know i keep wondering whether they change the embroidery or change the thread color whatever they pull out everything all right guys we're going to quickly embroider and i'm going to be using the um, small frame for this one you want to keep it short and simple you can see the size of the embroidery is actually listed on the hoop so you know it's a 50 by 70 millimeter okay guys so five by seven centimeter design size i always remember that whenever you hoop these you have to account like i would say a thumb distance to that's kind of where the foot of the uh, embroidery would go so if the size is just the size of the hoop always take a bigger size what i love about the seven series in burnett of uh, the 70 and the 79 they give you three hoops to play with so i think almost every sort of most popular embroidery size is covered by this so very standard hooping procedure i love the fact that these hoop have these clicky notches and you can like tighten and you know untighten with the screw feature here so i've got enough of space i've got double layer of a stabilizer i'm going to be embroidering on a basic cotton today i mean it's not an embroidery tutorial but i kind of feel like if you are uh, 
unboxing an embroidery machine, it's so important to do at least one embroidery, right? I feel like it gets incomplete without that demo. So I squeeze it, I can pull it just a little bit. And if you've seen my other embroidery tutorials, you know how important it is for it to make that tight sound. And once you got it, you just fasten it here. Hold it and squeeze it in. There we go. So it's nice, tight, and secure. Let's put this on the machine. And um, I don't know what I'm going to write today, but I'm going to probably put some letters. Let's check it out on the screen. So I just noticed this. It says it's got a high tension bobbin for perfect embroidery results. That is nice to know. All right. So I'm at the machine now. I'm going to push that open, take my touchscreen pen. You can like take this off guys. I feel like you can't really use a touch screen without the screen being available to be touched. <laughs> anyway, so go ahead. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but this is just calibration. Every time you switch on your machine, you need to calibrate the module. And the first steps that I always go for is to sort that out. Anyway, so the first thing you're gonna see is you get to choose from a lot of languages. Uh, and I am going to go with chi Chinese. I'm going to go for English. I was looking at the Mandarin alphabet there. All right, pick that. So anytime you want to make a change about that, you can always come down to the settings and you can make changes over there. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the language. So you can always change it around if you want to. Um, but yeah, I mean, the settings, uh, the settings folder allows you to make lots of changes in terms of how you want things to be when you play with different icons. I think we'll do another... Um, tutorial on this a separate one later on how you can make changes to the main settings but yeah I mean I even like the fact that you can customize like the color of your screen I'm such a purple person so I'm gonna go for purple anyway all right so today you know I could go ahead and put a bunch of designs over here but because I'm working with the small hoop uh, I'm gonna keep it very simple I'm gonna be just going for some letters I don't want to necessarily change thread color as well I mean, maybe I could do like a single thread from here. Oops, that's the wrong design. Uh, let's take another one, sorry. I don't know how big that is. Will that fit a small hoop? It does fit a small hoop. Look at that. It does fit a small hoop. So maybe we can embroider this nice heart here today. Um, but yeah, I mean, guys, to show you like how we can play around a little bit with... Um, sizing and placement so this is the placement tool so once you press this you can use the notches to like move right and left so the x is always going to move it right and left and the y which is the bottom one is always going to move it up and down and you notice whenever you make those changes there is like a little yellow it's just a temporary change you know that it's not in the default position so when you want to go back to default you can just click it and it returns back to where it was as original then you've got um mirror imaging can you see that vertically and horizontally you've got size change and you can change it like this smaller or bigger by the way or you can again use the dials um thing is um i would never change this like the range safe range of changing without using a digitizer would be 20% so you could either go all the way up to 120 or all the way down to 80% of the original size If you're gonna go down by half the size I would suggest put the design into toolbox reduce the size put it into a USB and then bring it back over here I hope that makes sense to you digitizers always program stitches better than the machine software which is in the machine wood um, Yeah, let's see what else we've got here nothing else delete rotate can rotate by a few degrees or by 90 degrees right okay so let's go ahead let's thread the machine and let's um, get that working uh, these are other buttons over here if I press this it's gonna go to the design center you saw that I hope you saw that the targets I moved to the design center um, I will mark a design center here uh, let's do that now right now actually so approximately if I use the grid all of these come with a grid you can see it's very easy for me to mark the center of the design right there let's see if that stuck yeah so I can see there's a design center and this design center this design center right here needs to match 
the design center that's there in the uh, heart. If you notice right now, if I take the placement tool, right, and I start to move the design, the needle is not budging. Technically, I want the needle to budge so it's easy for me to match the needle point with the design point. And the only reason why it's not doing that is because I have not yet calibrated the module. I've just switched it on. The module needs to be calibrated with the machine before you can start moving the needle. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So um, the only way to do it is to come to the Let's Embroider button. So let's click that and just follow the screen. So right now it just says, you know, we're ready to calibrate the hoop. And then you say yes. And then it moves the hoop. And then it says, please insert the hoop. So hoop insertion is super easy. You literally just like slide it in. There we go. Take it. Nice. And now that I've done that, I get the opportunity to say done it machine. And we're calibrated. Now notice if I, I mean, this is on stitch mode, but we want to come back to edit mode. And I'm going to um, press that button. Oh, did you hear that noise? So I now, when I move the knobs, I'm able to move the needle. So all I have to do now is adjust and bring it. And the best view of this is when you are literally on top of the machine. And I'm going to use the hand wheel now to just sort of see whether... There we go. The needle is actually so close to the center. So I know that I'm getting the embroidery placement where I want it to be. All right. Cool. That's it, guys. Now I'm just going to embroider. Let's go. So the only thing that I guess I have to mention is these is this is what happens. Like, for example, if the thread breaks and you want to go back a few stitches, that's the feature. Uh, this is just the hoop. Oops, this is the hoop position. I don't need to, like, I don't have to memorize this or play with this. I've actually never ever done that, so we could. And that's if I want a basting stitch around. I don't need it right now. Sometimes for some projects, people like that. Tells you how many um, minutes overall design and how many minutes between different thread colors. This design has a total of two colors. All right, so I'm gonna get two colors of thread and everything else is set. I've got all the hoops, the needles, the stitch blade, everything is the way it's supposed to be. So I just got to thread the machine and then I'm going to go ahead and embroider. I mean for those of you who don't know how to thread the machine, so today I'm going to be using a big cone and I'm using the spool holder for it so that it stays in place uh, but otherwise you'd probably put your thread over here. Um, so the dotted lines on the machine is to thread the bobbin. The machine comes with an already threaded bobbin so I'm not worrying about that. Um, the solid lines which you can see over here is to do the top needle threading. So I'm going to try to self film this um, a little alone right now. Um, so wish me luck. So. Yeah, so this is the first place I'm going to be putting the thread. Make sure that the needle and the foot is at the top position. If you don't know what that is, um, you actually can use these automated features. So foot's down, now the foot's completely up. When the foot is up, the thread tension is deactivated so it's easy to pull the thread to, through. If you don't know about the needle, you can put the needle down and now you can lift the needle up. So you know the needle is up foot is up and now it's a safe time for me to start doing this th it's a safe time for me to start doing the threading so the first thing that I did was I pulled it through this and follow the dots so follow the the straight arrow right so I'm gonna bring this around here I'm gonna change view now so you guys can see the rest the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be bringing it down all the way here under over and around so it gets locked into that area and now you bring it all the way down here around that hook and the last one is in front of the needle all right from here we're going to be using the um oops <laughs> i have not pulled out the plastic yet but there is something here you're going to be using the needle threader so um, how many of you know how to use a needle threader, semi-automatic needle threader? So the needle has to be in the top position, you put, bring this down, 
turn it around the that little green notch did you get it push it all the way down did you hear that click and then feed it into the second green notch now gently just pull <laughs> I just about made it oh I lost it okay let's try it again so here are the clicks again okay click here feed it and then gently pull it through there you go and that's how we thread the needle and I pardon really hope you guys got a good view of that and there is a thread cutter on the side here just cut the thread and we're good to go all right so i'm just going to go ahead i'm already ready to embroider uh, my rule of thumb when i start to embroider is always dial the speed down so that's the speed dial uh, press and hold the green button make sure that there is nothing underneath we're good we know it's flat fabric so press and hold till it starts and it's going to go slow and the first few stitches we just observe we hear that if everything is okay then we slightly Oh, it, it'll always stop to ask me to cut. I'm not going to cut. I'm going to just skip this. Uh, you're going to cut the uh, extra thread that's sticking up, but I'm okay with it. Press and hold. All right. So we're going to hear the sound to see if you're okay with the sound, and then we just gradually increase the speed. Uh, see, I'm okay with the sound. I think it's nice. I'm confident. I like what I'm seeing, so I'm going to dial up the speed. And if you want to go super fast, you can click the bunny rabbit. pretty cool right the thread is very nicely channeled some solid and right you speak like that and you can see like where it is right now as well how many minutes it's gonna take to finish that color how many stitches they are etc etc so I'm gonna come back to you guys um, once I change thread color and do the second one or you know what, I'll just leave a nice time lapse so you can see how it goes. Yeah, that's really pretty. I think it's a keychain design. Should have used uh, Aquamesh and shown you guys something different, but I think I'll save that for another tutorial. Uh, but yeah, and when you're done, just click OK. And uh, it's voila, it is ready. So guys, this is the deco. It's just a touch of what you can do with this machine. I love the sound of the embroidery, not too loud. I love the speed of the machine. Hello, e how easy it is to like manipulate designs. I love the fact it comes with so many hoops. I love the fact that it is so light, doesn't occupy so much space. And I love the fact that it's super economical in terms of like budget wise, super budget friendly. And finally, I love the fact that it comes with a little bit of a mini digitizer for you to like play with your designs. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Any questions you have about this machine technically, whatever, let me know and I will get back to you on comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, remember to um, hit the subscribe button. This is where I try to find that. Yeah, we got my fingers going to point at the subscribe button. Um, like the video and um, head to Classic Quilts if you're in the region to check this machine out. Otherwise, uh, contact your closest Burnett Bernina dealer and get this baby into your lives if you are ready for embroidery.